Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio, and today I am a happy, happy boy. Because I am particularly, specifically in this video, talking about cards that I am personally very excited about. Okay, fine. One card I'm very excited about, and two other cards that I think are very, very cool. And they're all fighting type Pokemon. And... I am delighted to say I translated all of these myself, and I am very, very happy indeed. Go team! So, what we've got here, the real focus of this, the real thing I'm excited about, is a new Don fan. Although, while we're here, look at the art on this fan pee. Kimura's not an artist I'm particularly collecting, or hasn't been on my radar or any of that, but oh my goodness... Look at the amazing artwork on this fan B. One of the absolute best pieces of art in the set. And look, I'm horrendously biased. I adore fan B, but goodness gracious me, that is a beautiful card. Uh, the attack is 10 damage, flip a coin if heads, 20 more. It's not good, but that's not the point, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the point. So Don Fan then, why am I getting excited about Don Fan? Well, firstly, 150 HP on stage one Pokemon is actually really good. So yay. Uh, now the four energy 170 is fine. Now it's actually a really nice amount of damage because the absolute maximum amount of HP we've seen on any V Max, any Pokemon really, is 340. So we can look at stuff like Eternatus V Max as a nice example. And of course, 170 doubled with weakness is in fact 340. So yeah. You will very nicely get a one-hit KO on even the biggest weak things, as in things you're hitting for weakness, like Eternatus. Which is brilliant! This four energy, mate. Come on. It actually reminds me very, very much of the Don Fan from Plasma Storm. Because you see, that Don Fan, and look, I played a lot of this Don Fan. I topped a regional with this Don Fan. Although I suppose I should tell you this was in the very short window between Lysander's trump card being released and people realizing that Seismitoad was the only good deck in that format because Don Fan could not beat Seismitoad so yeah I managed to get to top eight of a regional with it it was brilliant I loved it it was kind of a deck that could completely take advantage of that engine but then everyone realized Seismitoad could do it better and Don Fan just folded hard to Seismitoad. But the point is, you had your one energy attack that was pretty good, but then you had a four energy attack for emergencies. Although the two colorless energy in that was very important, we don't see that here. Point is, if you get enough energy on there, you've got a really nice attack that can two hit KO anything and one hit KO anything that's weak, but it's not what we're all about. What we're all about here is the first attack, for one energy, does 110 damage, as long as you haven't just evolved. Because if you evolved this turn, the attack does nothing. And I had to read that one a couple of times to really check my translation. Although I should say, I did obviously check with a lovely Antoine Boulet, just to make sure I hadn't done a silly. But my point is, this is both perfect and annoying. Now in terms of perfect, in the same way that that first attack is perfect for KOing weak V maxes. This second attack is perfect for KOing weak Pokemon V. Because the general amount of damage we need to hit to get a KO on a Pokemon V is, I've said it like a million videos, it's 220. That's the number we're aiming for. We're aiming for 220. And 110 is exactly half of 220. So if we look at something like, oh, I don't know, for argument's sake, Arceus, this seems to work absolutely perfectly. Because Arceus has 220 HP and is weak to fighting. So this will get a very nice, easy one-hit KO. And actually, the perfect numbers just keep on coming here. Because with a choice belt, you hit 140, which doubled is 280, which is the amount we see from Pokemon V-Star like Arceus. The numbers here are perfect. It's wonderful. But you can't attack the turn you evolve, which is actually super annoying. Because generally what you want to do is you go ahead and evolve up. You've gone first. Your opponent cannot have evolved because they haven't had a turn to evolve. You get a KO on Arceus. Go ahead in the prize race. Jobs are good. Em. Now you've got to give them a turn. 
And that's not an easy thing to just give your opponent a turn and let them roll. The other thing is, and it's not just colorless that are weak to fighting. We see some darkness that are weak to fighting, big stuff like Crobat, but it is still colorless. And I've got to tell you, Dunsparce is a thing. And not only is Dunsparce a thing, but if I've got to evolve and then wait a turn to attack, that gives my opponent one more turn to find Dunsparce. Which is a problem, honestly. That's like a real legit problem. Because I'm telegraphing what I'm going to do, because I've just evolved into Donphan, and then I'm giving my opponent a turn to find Dunsparce. Which I don't like. But having said that, if we go and have a look at stage one fighting Pokemon, what do we have that's better? Now, I'm a big fan of Wormadam, don't get me wrong. But let's not forget that Wormadam needs a special energy or two energy attachments. And it needs you to pile Pokemon into the discard pile. We can't exactly turn around and say that that's some kind of perfect solution. Because it's really not. In fact, the best alternative we've got is Donphan! <laughs> the only real alternative we've got as a Stage 1 Pokemon at the moment is a Donphan from Vivid Voltage. Now, what I will say is, in terms of second attack, this Donphan blows that Donphan out of the water. And this Donphan doesn't hit your bench. Now, to be fair, Vivid Voltage Donphan wants to hit your bench because of Vivid Voltage Fan P and its Outrage attack. Or Outrage style attack, at least. But, yeah, that hits 10 more damage and can attack the turn it evolves. So there is a decision to be made here. And I'm going to leave that one up to you. My point is, you need to be a little careful for now. When we hit rotation, it's irrelevant. Because early next year, we're going to rotate and we're going to lose this Donphan and it's going to go away. The thing is, I tested Vivid Vantage Donphan a lot. And I mean a lot. And Fampy isn't quite good enough. And there's way too much stuff around like Intellion that can pick off your bench. And the South Damage actually becomes a huge problem in the mid to late game. Because all your support Pokemon end up going down. That Donphan's not good enough. And believe me, I tried. I promise you I tried. Maybe this new Donphan is. Maybe this new Donphan can work. But you need something else. Because waiting till turn 3 to attack isn't going to cut it, you need something else. Now, what you can do here is combine this with Zoroark. Zoroark can use this very nicely. Because here's the thing, Zoroark, which will survive the rotation, you essentially discard it and replace it with a Pokemon from your discard pile. And I'm not 100% sure on the ruling. Now, if Zoroark has been down for a turn, it's easy, you can definitely attack with Donphan. If you evolve into Zoroark and then immediately switch for Donphan, I think you would be allowed to attack with Donphan. Because you haven't evolved into Donphan this turn. Donphan basically says, if you evolved into this Pokemon this turn, this attack fails. So I think, I think that would work. Because you've not evolved into this Pokemon, you've evolved into Zoroark and swapped. And, but then again, do the effects stay on, do the effects stay on Zoroark? Does the you've evolved this turn stay? It's something I want a ruling on. Regardless, you can still have Zoroark out for a turn and then swap into Donphan, which is a little bit more, a little bit more surprisey. But that is going to be a ruling I'm going to want. Either way, let's be clear. You hit perfect numbers with Donphan. It's a single energy Pokemon. It's got high HP for a stage one. And regardless of the ruling, it combos well with Zoroark. This is good. I like this. I'm, I mean, I'm giving it four Wossies, but it's probably not actually that good. I'm just super hyped for a new Don fan. Now, there is a higher going to suit a Donjourna here. And we should have a look at that one as well, because it's a fighting Pokemon, and it is higher going to suit a, and I love it. For a single energy, you get to choose two fighting energies from your hand and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. And I actually adore this with Don fan. Because essentially what you do 
is you can't attack with Don Fan and turn your evolve into it anyway. So just use Stone Journer for a turn or two. Start piling energy onto Don Fan and then maybe even using the second attack. That could be fun. Plus for four energy, you do 120 damage and place the top card of your opponent's deck in the loss zone. Which I think is really, really fun. Uh, it's only the top one card, but you could hit the perfect card. And remember, they're not recovering it from the Lost Zone. It's hyper expensive for four energy. Free of colorless, but it's still hyper expensive. Although the first attack obviously helps. But randomly putting a card in the Lost Zone, that could be fun. Plus, I wanted to show off this artwork. And because my son is a big fan of Palisand, it's his favorite Pokemon, I have to give a bit of love to the new Palisand here. Free energy 120 is not going to cut it. But for a single fighting energy on a stage 1, and 140 is again very high, you deal 30 damage to all Pokemon in play, yours and your opponents. Obviously, there's a combo here with the Vivid Voltage Fampy, which is quite nice. But what I really enjoy is just, you know, again, just bringing this as a surprise from Zoroark. Your opponent doesn't see it coming and all of a sudden you start spreading 30. I love this as a surprise one-off in Zoroark decks. But it does hit yourself as well, so be a little bit careful. But I will say, in any deck where you want to self-damage, something like a Fampy or something like a Tauros or things of that nature, this spreads while getting really good self-damage. And I said earlier in the video, there are a million different reasons at the moment why you shouldn't be trying to self-damage. I don't think, add as it stands, those decks are particularly viable. But, ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever need to self-damage, this is about the best option we've got. Plus, there's a new Palisand. If I don't give it love, I assume my son will be mad at me. So, yeah. Fun times, ladies and gentlemen. Fun times. Stone Journey is interesting. I do think that Palisand could be genuinely good in the right situation. But there's a new Don fan and I absolutely love it. There is a gigantic downside which might genuinely torpedo the playability of the card. I am aware of this. But there's a new Don fan and I love it. So I had to tell you about it. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Good us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.